Hello and welcome to Solved, where we help you solve problems. In this video, we will tackle the problem of a steady-state conduction system with both series and parallel resistances. We will discuss how the arrangements of the resistances will affect our heat transfer. This is the problem statement. A cross-section of a typical home ceiling is depicted below. Given the properties listed for the materials of construction, determine how much heat is transferred through the insulation and through the studs. We are given some parameters here such as the inside and outside temperatures, the inside and outside convective heat transfer coefficients, as well as the thermal conductivities of the materials used that's fiberglass, plaster, and wood. Let's go ahead and solve this problem. Here we have an illustration of our system. As you can see, I have assigned our inside space as the bottom of our figure, and at the top we have our outer surface. The inside temperature is 25 degrees Celsius and the outside temperature is negative 10 degrees Celsius, so we are expecting that heat would travel from the inside to the outside, that is from a higher temperature to a lower temperature. As such, the conduction of heat will travel through the plaster as well as through the pine studs or the wood and the loose fiberglass insulation. Just by examining this figure, we would determine that there are both series and parallel arrangements to the flow of the heat through the resistances. For example, from the plaster to the wood and to the fiberglass, the arrangement is series, while with respect to the fiberglass and for the wood, the arrangement is in parallel. So for us to simplify the assessment of this problem, it is important that we section off a part of this insulation. Since this insulation is made of repeating patterns of fiberglass and wood, we can simply isolate a section of this roof and we would have that as our representative of our entire insulation. That isolated section is right here. If you notice, the region that I boxed in contains all of our three substances, that is the fiberglass, the wood, and the plaster. And this allows us to quantify the thicknesses and the areas of our materials. In this case, the plaster is 2 cm thick, the wood is 15 cm thick, and the fiberglass is also 15 cm thick. In terms of the width, the fiberglass is 30 cm wide, the wood is 6 cm wide, while the plaster is 36 cm wide. That's simply 30 plus 6. Since we already know the thickness of our materials and its width, we also need to determine its length for us to be able to solve for the cross-sectional area of our materials. And that would be our basis. Let's assume for all of our calculations that our length is 1 meter. Again, the assumption of the length allows us to quantify the cross-sectional area of the materials. Remember that the cross-sectional area is perpendicular to the flow. If the flow of the heat, in this case, is from the bottom to the top, then the cross-sectional area involves the length of the system. If you are having a hard time grasping this concept, let me draw this in this way. So let's say, for example, that this is the section of the roof that we have sectioned out. Right? This is 15 centimeters thick, and this is 36 centimeters total in width. The 1 meter length is right here. This is our basis, length is equal to 1 meter. And since our heat transfer is through this direction, the cross-sectional area that we will consider is this part of our illustration. This area is characterized simply as length times width. Keep that in mind for the rest of our solutions. In this problem, we are required to solve for the rate of heat transfer Q. Since this is steady state conduction, in simple terms, we can solve for the rate of heat transfer as the overall driving force, that is delta T. This is simply the temperature inside minus the temperature outside, divided by the summation of the resistances or the total resistance of the system. Our analysis of the series and parallel connections would affect the total resistance of the system. So if you're going to represent our system in terms of a resistor diagram, it would look something like this. This is our inside temperature, T in. We encounter our first resistance to heat transfer. This is due to convection inside of your room. This is 1 over HIAI. And then immediately connected to that in series is the plaster. This is delta X 
of the plaster over K of the plaster times area of the plaster. Directly after that, you encounter two materials at the same time. This is where our parallel connection would come in. We encounter the fiberglass and the wood at the same time. Therefore, they are connected in parallel to the plaster. So we draw that as like this. Our first resistance here pertains to the fiberglass. We call that delta X fiberglass over K fiberglass, A or area of the fiberglass. And for our resistance at the bottom, this is delta X of the wood over thermal conductivity of the wood, area of the wood. This parallel arrangement of the wood and of the fiberglass is in series with the outside environment. So we have our last resistance here. This is due to the convection at the outside. 1 over HOAO. And of course, we have here temperature at the outside. This is our complete resistance diagram and this will help us in determining the total effective resistance. For simplicity, let us call these resistances R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5. Now let's determine our total effective resistance. We can make this easier by first dealing with the resistances in parallel, that is R3 and R4. Let us combine them and call that resistance R34. We can solve this as 1 all over 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4. This is how you deal with resistances in parallel. Substituting this becomes 1 over 1 over R3, that is delta X of the fiberglass, over K fiberglass, area of fiberglass, plus 1 over R4, delta X of wood, over K wood, area of wood. Let us determine what are the cross-sectional areas involved in this problem. The cross-sectional area of the plaster in this case is simply length, which is our basis of 1 meter length, multiplied by the width of the plaster layer, that is 36 centimeters or 0 0.36 meters. For the wood, we do the same. Its cross-sectional area is equal to our basis, 1 meter length, multiplied by the width of the wood studs, that is 6 centimeters or 0 0.06 meters. And finally, the area of the fiberglass, we follow the same pattern. And finally, for the area of the fiberglass, that's simply 1 meter length, our basis, multiplied by the width of the fiberglass layer, that's 30 centimeters or 0 0.3 meters. Do not confuse these cross-sectional areas with the thickness of the materials. For the thickness of the materials, we have delta X of the plaster, that is 2 centimeters or 0 0.02 meters. The thickness of the wood is 15 centimeters or 0 0.15 meters. And that is the same with the thickness of the plaster, 0 0.15 meters. With all of these parameters sorted out, we can now determine the value of R34 or the effective resistance of R3 and R4. Substituting that is 1 over 1 over delta X of fiberglass is 0 0.15 centimeters over K fiberglass 0 0.035 times the cross-sectional area of fiberglass that is 0 0.3 square meters. And to this, we add... The reciprocal for the resistance offered by wood. Delta X for wood is 0 0.15 meters. All over K for wood is 0 0.15 watts per meter per Kelvin multiplied by the cross-sectional area of wood, 0 0.06 square meters. You can now see the utility of why we chose 1 meter as our representative length. That is to easily solve for the cross-sectional area of the different materials. Because essentially, you are just multiplying with 1. Our R34 is calculated to be 7.69 Kelvin per watts. Kelvin per watts is the unit for resistance. Now that we know the value of R34, we simply solve for the other resistances, R1, R2, and R5. For R1, that is simply 1 over HI, or H inside, 10 watts per square meter per Kelvin multiplied by the area exposed inside, that is the same as the cross-sectional area of the plaster, 
0.36 square meters. R1 is 0.278 kelvins per watt. Let's proceed to R2. This is a resistance due to conduction. So this is delta X over Ka. Delta X for plaster is 0 0.02 meters or 2 centimeters divided by the thermal conductivity for plaster, 0.814 multiplied by the cross-sectional area of plaster that's still 0.36 square meters. Our R2 is 0 0.0683 kelvins per watt. And finally, R5, this is due to convection. This is 1 over H outside, 20 watts per square meter per Kelvin, multiplied by the outside exposed surface area, that's still 0.36 square meters. Our system is a slab, therefore the exposed area inside is the same as the exposed area outside. Our R5 is 0 0.139 kelvins per watt. Now that we have all of this, we can get our effective total resistance. We simply add the values of R1, R2, R5, and R3, 4. Okay, so this would be plus 0 0.0683 plus 0.278 plus 7.69. Our total resistance is 8.18 kelvins per watt. To solve for our total rate of heat transfer, it's also straightforward. We simply divide our driving force with our total resistance. So we write Q is equal to delta T, that is T inside minus T outside, over your summation of resistances or the total resistance. Substituting this is simply 25 degrees Celsius inside minus negative 10 degrees Celsius outside, divided by our total resistances. Our total rate of heat transfer is 4.28 watts. It is important to remember that this is the rate of heat transfer for 1 meter length of the insulation. Again, the 1 meter length of insulation is part of our initial basis for solving this problem. We can also use the same analysis to determine the rate of heat transfer through the wooden stud. If we are going to single out the wood, we still use the same rate of heat transfer. If we want to determine the rate of heat transfer only through the wood, then if we take a look at our equivalent resistance diagram, we would have to section out this part. Right? Because the resistance for wood is right here, that is our R4. And if you are going to do this analysis, then you have to define new junction temperatures. This is simply temperature junction 1, and let's call this temperature junction 2. Of course, you can also have a simplified way of solving this. For example, our total rate of heat transfer, which is 4.28 watts, also applies to any other parts of our system. So we can write that the total rate of heat transfer, Q sub t, is also equal to the rate of heat transfer only through the wood plus the fiberglass. Remember that the wood and the fiberglass are in parallel, so we always have to consider them as a package. This can be written as the delta T in the junctions divided by our R34. Remember that R34 is the equivalent resistance of 3 and 4 which are in parallel. With this, we know that the rate of heat transfer is constant at 4.28 watts. We can solve for delta T junction. This is the difference between T junction 2 minus T junction 1. This is simply equal to Q total multiplied by R34. We solve this as 4.28 watts multiplied by 7.69 kelvins per watt. Our delta T, of course, would have units of Kelvin. So our delta T in the junctions for our selected section is 32.92 Kelvins. Now that you know this delta T, you can go back to our equation on Q. With that, we can now express the rate of heat transfer through the wood as the change in temperature in the junction or the temperature difference in junction divided by R4, which is the resistance describing the wood. Furthermore, because the wood and the fiberglass are in parallel, they are experiencing the same difference in temperature or the same junction temperature, 
You can also determine the rate of heat transfer to the fiberglass as delta T in the junction divided by R3. This is the nature of steady state heat transfer by conduction. You can section off any part of your equivalent resistance diagram and then determine the rate of heat transfer or the junction temperatures through that part. Just remember that the rate of heat transfer is constant all throughout. That is the same as saying that our solved Q sub T or the total rate of heat transfer of 4.28 watts is also equal to QW is also equal to QF is also equal to QW plus F and all of the other rate of heat transfers through the resistances. Knowing that concept would be important in determining junction and surface temperatures. That's it for this problem. I hope you've learned something. Thank you for listening and this has been another problem solved.